Um, I think you raised a good point. Do you want to talk about your point that... Um... Uh, yeah, and it, it kind of allude, allude back to your idea of how Scarlet Witch was misrepresented, at least, again, based on the prior movie and how she appeared to be very strong there. And I'm going to talk more about uh, what I uh, the beginning part of the movie in which she she had a scene with Vision, but I'm going to mention the, the battlefield part where she was in the lab with Vision uh, while he his uh, the Infinity Stone was getting uh, taken off of his forehead, and um, the uh, they they didn't want the the uh, the enemies they didn't want to invade the laboratory because she was there. But the instant she went onto the battlefield, that was when they invaded the laboratory. And to me, that made me feel like they that Scarlet Witch was a threat to them and that she was actually very powerful. So I kind of got the idea that she was pretty strong there, but then. Going back to think about that scene at the beginning where her and uh, Vision were in Scotland and two of the uh, Thanos children, what were they called? Children of Thanos? Yeah, children of um, Thanos. They, they appeared to, of course, retrieve the Affinity Stone from, from Vision's forehead and they were getting their butts kicked. I'm talking about Scarlet Witch and Vision, that is. like They were just getting manhandled and for, again, somebody who is as strong as Scarlet Witch seems to be and for a a uh, character like Vision, who is, was in the possession of an Infinity Stone, granted he got stabbed or whatever, but still he was in possession of an Infinity Stone, and for them to get manhandled like that, it, it, to me, it, it made me kind of like back out. As maybe that's how we describe it, like back out from what just being immersed in the film and start thinking this shouldn't be happening, right? I'm right at that point. I was just, you know, criticizing the film for. What I was saying is like I thought the Infinity Stone was supposed to be like even just being in possession of one of them meant that you were like very powerful. But for them to get manhandled like that, it just made me feel um, it didn't make it feel believable. And then to add on top of that, then you have um, when Captain America and Black Widow and um, what's the other guy? Um, the Falcon. I forget. Falcon. Yeah, yeah. When they showed up, and then they started getting the upper hand because they know how to fight it, like it, physically they didn't have no immune powers widow. they just <laughs> it's black widow man come on she she knows everything and she's scarlett johansson <laughs> come on <laughs> no i agree with you totally i totally agree with you that was for me that was that was bullshit right there <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not sure if that's being nitpicky but i just didn't find that believable for people for care like again for Characters like Vision and Scarlet Witch who have the ability to manip, who has powers, yes. like nothing like, and then <laughs> for them not to at least have like an edge in, in any regards with the Infinity Stone and then with Captain America and then just knowing how to to fight physically and get the upper hand on these two guys who appear to be extremely strong. I mean, I, I don't know. I, again, I'm not sure being, being, not being nitpicky, but I just, I don't know. Well, just to play devil's advocate here uh they did disarm them and use their own weapons against the children of thanos and plus captain america it has a serum in him so but the one that i can't make any reasoning for is uh, scarlet i mean uh black widow because she has no power <laughs> she's just she's one of those just seductive spies that's how i see her she does have her web shoot well not web shoot it's the little poison darts that she has in, in the comics and everything She's a great secret agent. That's why she's in S.H.I.E.L.D. But, yeah, I see her more like a Red Sparrow. If you've seen the movie Red Sparrow, it's more like a, that, that she can disguise herself emotionally and stuff like that. But, yeah, uh, I agree with you. I don't see how they could have came in. And, first of all, how did they know where they were? Weren't they hiding? Like Captain America, Falcon, and Black Widow? What, wasn't it mentioned? I'm, I'm sure if I'm being right here, but didn't they mention like they were actually keeping an eye on them, but they were just being very subtle about it? Mm-hmm. Oh, but not they were, you know, trying. And then, but then, like when it was time to, for them to actually take action, that they actually did. I'm, I'm not sure if I was. I'm, I'm wrong about maybe, that. Maybe, maybe, maybe they, they yeah. did mention something like that. I think I saw. Yeah, yeah, I remember them. that. Uh, I think it was Captain who said like, at least, good thing we were keeping tabs on you or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's that's right. Okay, so back to more things that we're going to pick about. Close to right after that, with the battle between uh, Doctor Strange and one of the children of Thanos, you know, when they're trying to take the stone away from him and they're fighting in New York, uh, the children of Thanos captures Doctor Strange, takes him on his 
donut ship back to rendezvous with Thanos. Iron Man gets on the ship uh, along with Spider-Man. Here's the thing. They start talking. Tony mentions that he's known about Thanos or knows the power that Thanos has since the New York incident because he he saw it either in his mind or tapped into mind whatever so he knows the capability of him and I think you said yeah but he doesn't know how strong he is he's never seen him which leads me to my next one wouldn't you want to go with more than just three people plus actually two superheroes and one in training if you want to say that Spider-Man is still like in training <laughs> My idea, and here's what I would just assume because of what I know of Doctor Strange in the movies, not the comic. In the movie, he has the ability to open a portal to anywhere in on Earth. Wouldn't he tell Tony, hey, Tony, thinking this spaceship is leading us to Thanos? Am I correct? Yeah, you're right. Strange. Okay, um, let me give me a tracker so I know where you're at and I can open a portal to the spaceship. Meanwhile, I'm going to go to Earth, let Bruce Banner, the Hulk, and let him talk to him and tell him, hey, Ron, you know, call Captain America, get all the team together in one center location. And when you're ready, hit me up. I'll open a portal. We all rendezvous in the spaceship. And when we show up with Thanos, we're going to be like, bitch, we're here. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a logical plan to do instead of like, hey, no, it's OK. Tony, uh, Doctor Strange and the kid, we can handle this. I, I was like, I was like, why? Why are they doing this? I'm like, uh, the only redeeming part of that scene was where Spider-Man references the Alien movie and how to defeat the guy. So I, I was happy with that. But then when I started looking at it, I was like, why didn't Doctor Strange suggest to use a portal? You know, I'm like, this is kind of yeah. like a little thing that he should have done. Or or better yet, while they were battling Thanos on Titan, the final fight, why didn't Doctor Strange use the same technique that he used on Dormammu when he locked him in a time loop? Uh, I know people are going to tell me like that's a cop out, but at the same time, like, wouldn't that be the easiest thing to do so the other superheroes could still get some time and rendezvous together and make a better plan than just attacking every everybody at the same time or you know doing everybody's plan separately? I mean, it's to me that's like a, a more of a getting what we know from other movies into this movie, but people will say, hey, that's just reusing the same movie he used before. Uh, yeah, I mean, those are pretty valid points. Uh, more like, you know, it, the what if stuff. But then at the, at the same time, it does make sense for them to have gone those routes. For me, it was, I, the, what I started thinking that way when, uh, it was when, uh, Doctor Strange used his ability of the stone, the, the his, his time stone to foresee the future and all the outcomes. And then he saw one future in which, you know, they lived and they won. And I thought to myself, couldn't he have done this a while ago? Like, why did it have to be then and there? Was there, like, some restrictions? Like, did, did he need to, like, see Thanos or something? Or I don't know. But why could not he have done this a while back so that they would not have been in the situation that they were at that point? I don't know. Again, maybe just being nitpicky, but that's no, kind of what I think. I think you're right on it. Because here's the thing, though. Like, he still didn't even see Thanos. So why would he have to wait until that precise moment to use that ability couldn't he have used it on the way there on the spaceship you know then let tony know hey uh there's only one possibility and this is how it runs let everybody know about the plan uh but the other thing is that we saw that thanos was about to kill tony and he was telling strange to give him the stone the time stone the infinity the infinity stone and he said sure like i'll give it to you but just don't kill him i think the reason was leading back to what you were saying that he foresaw the future that is how it needed to be he needed to give the stone for tony to live in order to collect all the stones which led him to snap his finger which led him okay this is a spoiler this is the after credit that led to everybody disintegrate which led us to see nick fury also going to disintegrate but before then he paged captain marvel so in my mind leading back to what strange said I needed to give him the stone. It had to be that way. This is the way it needed to be. He referencing that timeline. This is how it has to go down in order to call Captain Marvel in order for you to live because you guys are going to be important in the final fight or the final chapter, which is the way they beat him in part two, I hope. But I mean, this is how I saw it. This is him referencing. This is what I saw. This is how it had to go down. And, you know, like he's just playing along the storyline. And making sure it progresses the way it should go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That, that. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, the way you described, it, I, I could imagine that too. But like I said, it, it was more like I don't know. Had, had he done this earlier, then he could have probably still played through that timeline as well. It made it. It would have made a little more. Made it 
more impactful in a sense too, because then you would not have seen that coming, right? Right. Say like an hour or before that scene came up where he handed him the stone Thanos, that is. Yeah. Like he already knew that if this was going to happen a long time ago, right? Yes. And then he was just trying to play up to that point. Then to me, it would have been that much more impactful because you would not have seen that coming at all. It's like, really? This is how they were going to win? They were going to give him the stone without any force or whatever? Like, that would have caused so much, like, drama between, like, Tony Stark and Doctor Strange, I would imagine. It's like, I thought you saw the future in which we won, so why are you handing him the stone after all this time? Yeah. Rather than it being kind of like in the moment kind of thing where it was just like, you know, maybe moments before Donald showed up that he saw into the future. Yeah. So I guess it's it, it more about impact, I guess. Yeah. Okay, uh, my next thing is going to talk about Thanos. Um, so do you really think Thanos is a, that bad of a guy? Because, I mean... Uh, according- let me put it this way. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell you what I think first. Because, I mean, Thanos is a bad guy. <laughs> But not that bad of a guy. Because if you squint and you kind of look at it from an upside down position, you kind of see the good in him. I mean, he's doing something bad, but he has the best of intentions for people. Referencing back to uh, Gamora's planet. He had to destroy half of the population so half of the people can live and, you know, prosper. And now they're happy and they're, you know, their planet's safe. Before, everybody was starving. So, he sees it his way. Like, hey, I did a good thing. But Gamora is pointing out, like, no, no, no. You killed half of the people. That's that's a bad thing. But he's always going, like, no, no. But I did the good thing. Look, they're, they're alive. And they're happy. And they're thanking me. So, I, I did a good thing. So what do you think about that? Uh, can we see Thanos as a good guy? Or do we just see him as a bad guy? Uh, I, I definitely don't see him as a good guy. Okay. Uh, I see him as a bad guy. But he does have human characteristics of him that makes him... That makes you as an audience sympathize for him. For what he's trying to accomplish. Despite all the evil doings that he's doing. Because, I mean, regardless of his intention, he's still killing people and that in itself is bad that's just not acceptable exactly. but in terms of his reasons though i mean like i said you you kind of sit back and you kind of think about it he he's trying to preserve life by well he's, he calls it randomly killing off people he's not being picky yes it's, it's a little contradictory at the same time because he did keep gamora alive so it's a little hypocritical there but at the same time he actually fell he came to love Gamora we That's recognize true. this of course when he That's went true. after the the soul stone in which the the watcher uh was it? I believe it was Red Skull, Red Skull yeah. yeah he he told him that in order to get the soul stone that he needed to trade a soul for a soul somebody that you you loved and so it was funny that Gamora and for me too at that point when when I saw it I was like huh the, the, trick, the joke's on you, Thanos. You don't love anybody. How are you going to get this so stone? The like, universe has judged you. And, yeah, and I was like, on Gamora's side, I was like, oh my god, Thanos is not going to be able to get the so stone. But then you see Thanos with tears, and then Red Skull is saying, like, he says something along the line, but he's not, his tears is, isn't for, for himself. Then you realize it was for her because he was going to lose his, his quote-unquote daughter. Yes. And then that was when it hit Gamora. Yeah, I mean, and then Gamora realized that, oh, she didn't see this completely. Like, she just thought, oh, Thanos was not capable of loving somebody. And now she's in this position in which she's going to be the sacrifice so that he could get the soul stone. And that was when he she tried to kill herself by stabbing herself with like the dagger or whatever. But then, of course, Thanos used uh, the, the reality stone, stone or whatever yeah. To, yeah, to, to just trick her. And then, yeah, he tosses her off the cliff, and then he obtains the Soul Stone. So, again, in that retrospect of him ret- having human characteristics, I feel that, at least me, as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty sure other people feel the same way, he does retain human characteristics that makes me feel sympathetic towards him. But in, in, ter- in retrospect to your question of whether he's a good guy or a bad guy, he's still a bad guy, though. <laughs> he's just doing it to an extreme level in which... He's pretty much committing um, not complete genocide, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so pretty bad. <laughs> okay, I agree with you and all that, and I'm and I'm still gonna go with that. I'm on your side thinking Thanos is a bad guy, but I can play the other card and say I'm gonna play the comic book here. In the comic book, in this series, the original one from the '80s, um, it's a five 
mini series story uh at the end he gets defeated by the avengers and we see him almost scene by scene as l the last part of the movie where he goes and sits down and he overwatches the valley and he sits down and finally he's at peace like or he's relaxed and saying like my task is done i can i can rest now that in itself to me seems like look he wasn't doing it just because he he was an asshole he was doing it because it was a task that he needed to do or have somebody finally stop him and in the comic book they stop him and he becomes a farmer and he's still happy and i think it's just like he has this task that he has to do or a mission that he has to do even if he succeeds or fails if somebody stops him at least he tried to do the mission for him the mission was collect the infinity stones and try to do this balancing the universe in his mind is the good way of doing everything if he gets stopped by the avengers which he did in the comic book he's happy with it he's like okay i got defeated fair and square now i can stop and rest i can retire basically so I can say that he, like you said, he does have human emotions. He does care about people the way he kept Gamora and he loved her, especially since the beginning, because we saw this in the flashback when he picked her and said, you know, come over here and behind her, you see her people are getting slaughtered. When she tries to turn to see, you know, what they're doing, he gently like turns her head around and says, no, no, no look over here. Like He's still like trying to protect her from the evils of whatever he's doing in that sense to me is like look he he wants somebody to love and he finally found it in the little girl and says like i can start with her i have love to give and i can give it to her even though i'm doing this mission that i'm doing to kill half of the universe i can still show some love so to me it's like in his mind he's the good guy and just people are not seeing it through his eyes but like you said that's the tyrant way of why of, of analyzing and giving validity to somebody's quest to kill people you know so i'm just pointing it out that maybe thanos is he's doing it because he genuinely thinks that it's the only way of doing it and if somebody stops him guess what he's gonna accept defeat too he's gonna be like you defeated me good for you i'll stop